Live from the Computer History Museum in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE. Covering OpenStack Silicon Valley 2016. Brought to you by Mirantis. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Lisa Martin. Welcome back to live coverage of OpenStack Silicon Valley. We are live in Silicon Valley. This is SiliconANGLE Media's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. This is day two of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Live here on the ground at the Computer History Museum. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Lisa Martin this week. Lisa, day two coverage kickoff. Um, a lot of great action. Yesterday was day one. We kind of you know, analyzed, we talked about it. A lot of buzz around OpenStack. Some of the headlines that came out of our Cube. Um, interviews yesterday was the zigzag comment that was interesting, but also um, Martin Casada's keynote really has been going viral, and I think that resonated with a lot of folks here because this OpenStack community is very strong developer community. Absolutely, they've successfully survived and zigged and zagged. Now about to thrive, but Martin Casada, former SDN at Nasera, sold to VMware, now at Andreessen Horowitz really putting out the red meat. And, and what I mean by that is that he set the tone for what I believe will be a direction for this industry in OpenStack, which is that, look at the old way is dying. And you know, no one cares about Gartner reports, sales with golf meetings, they care about developers, they care about try and buy organic. It's a buyer-led journey, not a supplier-led narrative. And I think that spoke to people yesterday, and I think we saw that on one of our articles get a zillion retweets and I think this leads into the sentiment of the developer community, which is there is so much opportunity out there right now to one, commercialize and also monetize and make money and build a business Absolutely. around some disruptive technology from open daylight, whether it's that. It's, this is the software eating the world. This is Andreessen Horowitz kind of core theme a few years ago, but now Mark Andreessen and Andreessen Horowitz is putting out a new narrative called software powering the world. So first it was eating the world, now it's powering the world. It is, and we actually heard that in some of the keynotes this morning that talked about every company needs to become a software company. How do they do that? And to your point, it is a buyer's world. Um, Martin Casada talked about this explosion that the market is seeing in terms of developer-centric startups. I'm very curious to talk to some of our guests today about that. We had a great lineup yesterday that really showed that developer-led community and what it's been able to do, and also how it's unlocking the theme of the, of the summit this week, how it's unlocking the monetization options and new values and new channels. I'm very I'm curious to talk to Microsoft. We've got James Staten who just yeah. finished his keynote yeah. uh, here at the event this morning on his views, not just on Microsoft open source, what's going on there, but also his view on the developers. I think he has an yeah. intriguing view on that, but I agree with you. I think the momentum around yeah. what Andreessen Horowitz was saying is really shining through here and we're seeing yeah. our guests articulate that very strongly. And I wonder what Staten from Microsoft will say, will he be mostly Microsoft peddling the Microsoft narrative? Will he bring in a more industry view? We hope he brings a more industry view. Um, I'm excited about interviewing Lou Tucker. Lou Tucker will be coming on at 11.30, I'm sorry, um, and Lou Tucker is at Cisco, and Lou Tucker is a living legend in the tech business. In fact, at this show, at the Computer History Museum, he actually has an exhibit in the museum itself. He built, at Thinking Machines with his team, a Cube product, a supercomputer. So it's in this supercomputer uh, exhibit. I got a picture yesterday. Uh, Seth took a picture of myself and uh, Lou. So, I mean, he's literally the only person at this event at the museum that actually has something in the museum. We have the self-driving cars here, so it's really a great, great opportunity, and Lou is a legend in the industry, and looking forward to get his thoughts. Also, Patrick Riley's going to be coming on. He was the founder of Kismatic. They sold to Apprenda, and they, um, he's now moving on to new things, and he's going to give us the lowdown on Kubernetes. Kubernetes has been the fastest growing technology trend, and some say putting a real threat into the position of Docker as the de facto standard, and so we're going to hear what's going on with Kubernetes. So I think those two interviews are going to be kind of a little check on the, on the schedule in terms of, of focus. So I love that, have the legend in Lou talking about what's going on, and how the previous revolutions in the industry map to the trajectory now, What's the big growth opportunity? Where's the technology neighbors? And of course, orchestration is at the center of it. So day two is going to be great, and um, we're looking forward to it. I got to ask you though, on the keynote this morning, anything jump out at you? Yes, absolutely. I think one of the things that jumped out at me is really uh, dispelling myths about 
open cloud, just probably miss about hybrid cloud. Uh, one of the things we talked a lot about yesterday is some of the stats, you can kind of argue stats and surveys one way or the other, but we are hearing that obviously open source really focused on the enterprise, but enterprise is being challenged there with deployments, with making it successful. Well, a couple of our guests today, I'm excited to get some of their advice for enterprises. How do they be successful? How, what's the mindset, what's the cultural change that is needed um, at organizations in order to be successful? How do they kind of restart? So I think we're going to have some myths dispelled today and get some great best practices. Um, on the Microsoft front, one of the things I, I caught from the keynote is the move towards hybrid cloud and really this hybrid world. John, we talked yesterday about the open cloud opportunity. It's here for hybrid cloud, IOT, NFV. I'd like to hear some more perspectives today. Um, from, you mentioned Lou Tucker. Um, I'd love to get his take on intercloud at Cisco. How does that relate to hybrid cloud? What is that? And what is the future direction for yeah. companies of all sizes looking to become Well, you know, we coined the term software. intercloud on theCUBE two years ago. Not to be confused with internetworking, because kind of a joke on Cisco, but that really is the opportunity, this idea of multiple clouds. And the phenomenal. connectivity. Absolutely. Well, I got to share with you something I saw on the web this morning on our, on our data, data science operation, surface some good insight. Um, we had an interview yesterday with Marantis and uh, Susa, who were talking about the um, Linux, um, software enterprise Linux running on Marantis. There's an article on uh, Computer Reseller News that says, Marantis sidesteps Red Hat resistance to rival OpenStack software running on dominant Linux. Red Hat calls foul. So interesting, we had that article. And apparently Red Hat took issue with, with that deal, um, saying that you know, Marantis is trying to create a partnership with Red Hat, um, and which is early strategic maneuver by them. It's Mar and also Red Hat's an investor in right. Marantis. So interesting, kind of like gamemanship. I wonder if there's more there. So I'm going to dig into that today and ask around on that. So interesting update from yesterday, Marantis and Red Hat, what's going on there? Other things that I think I'm interested in learning is, what are these customers saying? We have Puppet Labs that's going to be on the show today and they talk about over 30,000 organizations using Puppet. Who are they? What are they asking for? What's the feedback loop? If they're really focused on the DevOps folks, what is that feedback loop and how are customers being successful? What are uh, these companies hearing from customers that's really leading them to be market leaders in uh, open source community? Well, it should be fun day two, coverage live here in Silicon Valley. Uh, again, all the innovation here has been phenomenal. I think it's been interesting, and the security question really hasn't come up much. We touched on it a little bit yesterday, also an area I'm going to dig into, but I'm really looking forward to finding out what Microsoft's view of OpenStack is and Definitely. how Azure Stack differs from OpenStack. We're going to dig into that, and a lot more here. Lou Tucker's coming on, Patrick Riley, we've got James Staten, Staten coming on from Microsoft. A lot of great coverage for day two here at OpenStack Silicon Valley. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier, Lisa Martin. We'll be right back with more day two coverage after this short break. You're watching theCUBE. <laughs>